Shut up, Shawnee! <laughs> okay, so today... Well, not today, but this video, I'm going to be explaining this game. It's Alice in Wonderland The Madness Returns? I think it's just Alice the Madness Alice Returns. Alice Madness Returns, okay. Um, this is... Well, of course, throughout the... I, I kind of went a little ahead, didn't read, didn't watch any of the, the little cutscenes or anything. Sure, yeah. But just to see, you know, what, what the game might be about. Um, apparently, you have Alice, and of course, you can see the blood stain on her dress. Um, and of course, the little thing there, that's blood, of course, you know, blood drops. But anyway, um, you got Alice, and I'm going to go into extra content, and in this video, I'm going to be explaining... Uh, this game. I wouldn't recommend this game to be watched by anybody that is, I don't know of what age, just in all honesty, if you don't like creepy things, do not watch this video. If you don't, if you're not allowed to watch anything bloody, anything murderous, I haven't gotten that far in the game. I have seen tiny amounts of the clips because of the fact that you know, really I could skip it, and I've seen some weird things. And a lot of the people are real creepy and, I wouldn't say demonic, but possibly could be. Uh, I'm going to be reading the past of Alice for you guys in this video. Um, okay. Notes extracted from the casebook of Hieronymus Q. Wilson, M.D., Rutledge Asylum. On November 5th, 1863, Alice Liddell, Liddell sorry, was severely burned in the fire that destroyed her family home in Oxford and took the lives of her parents and her older sister, Lizzie. While the girl's seared skin gradually healed during a year of hospitalization, the trauma caused by her family's horrific demise deepened. The orphan's condition swung from comatose to uncontrollably hysterical and back in the course of a given hour. Learned medical opinion deemed her a danger to herself, and an indefinite term of institutional confinement was ordered. As I said, um, this, this is a, I don't know, a sane asylum Creepy. kind of, the, it's it's a walk on the side of that instead of Alice actually having this magical stuff she was institutionalized and she was condemned as crazy Anywho, at her preliminary examination at Rutledge on November 11th 1864 Alice presented as deaf dumb and blind to stimulation she seemed in the brutal expression of the practice in training for the coffin only her age saved her from immediate assignment to the notorious Bedlam Catacombs. Despite insensible passivity, preternatural, preternatural, whatever, I don't know what that word is, sorry, quietness and evident dementia, a course of treatment was prescribed. During the first six months of 1865, she was subjected to all the best conta ah, con contemporary Remedies without result. Cold plaster sessions and bloodletting were ineffective and unproductive. Applications of experimental shock apparatus useless. Likewise, massive doses of laudanum in a desperate toss, restraints, including a straitjacket, solitary confinement, sensory deprivation, confiscation of her toy rabbit, and cancellation of afternoon tea were tried, and failed completely. She would not respond. You know, so, you know, in, in, like, this portion of it, it's explaining that they put her, they, they were they doing experiments. Yes, that's what it is. They caused a lot of damage to her brain, of course, with that, yeah. But And body. Of course. <sighs> they were doing experimentations on her, trying to fix her. Quote, unquote, of course. And, uh, none of them worked. Yeah. She did not resist treatment or in any way react to it. She simply ignored it. She shut down completely and shut out the world. Shortly after the diagnosis of demented was confirmed, she fell into a comatose state. 
Despite her mental infirmity, infirmity, she appeared physically fit. Staff remained hopeful, not to say optimistic, that she would regain her balance. Her bodily functions were reasonably attended to, but there were pitiful si few signs how of recovery. Then in the autumn of 1873, after eight years of fitful sleep, Alice spoke by drawing. Her first picture was of an alarming cat. But only bouts of angry, incomprehensible screaming and hysterical sobbing allowed this dobis opening of communication. She became intermittently convulsive and had to be sedated frequently. From time to time, various medicinal preparations and chemical potions were forcibly administered to little effect, and she required more than just verbal encouragements to eat. So it, in here it's explaining how after all the tests they did on her, she finally started coming out of what they called her being crazy, I guess. Uh, Comatose state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She, of course, like it said, you guys all know the story of the cat. And uh, so she said, you know, they're saying that she did speak and she's just freaking out, which made them put more medicine in her, more medicine. And it says it didn't work. And then they had to basically force her to eat or do things to make her encouraged. But something that did look like progress occurred in late November of that year. While her inarticulate mutterings and screams continued, she responded, if not appropriately, at least comprehensibly, to her surroundings. When grossly insulted by the ward orderlies, the superintendent's impo <laughs> imbecilic nephews, Alice, without warning, scared off one of the twins with her furious attack. She handled her spoon like a knife and made the other bleed like a stuck pig. But then she turned the makeshift weapon on her own wrists. Fortunately, staff prevented her from doing terrible physical damage to herself, but she regressed to her previous state. Days of silence, sometimes sketching fantastical scenes and characters, spouting senses poetry, and incomprehensible raving. Catatonic trances, unintelligible shouts and groans. Suddenly, in spring of this year, there was a change. She began to speak. So, it's saying that she had progress, she re responded to people, and, um, of course, not in a very, very good way, but they thought it was considered her getting better. Civil, then vulgar, de declarative, then cryptic speech. In and out of her chaotic, violent, deranged, and terrifying dream world, Wonderland. But the periods of lucidity grew longer. She became confidential, she shared some of her sadness, her grief over loss of family and herself. But most often she droned on and on with about fantastical visions. These delusions had no reality, of course, but conversation makes a connection with the world. This was a significant development, cogent but often disconnected, and to me, meaningless talk about Wonderland, tea parties, the fungiferous forest, boojums, jack bombs, snarks, demon dice, and the dastardly Red Queen was nonetheless encouraging. Though her moods ran the gamut from despondent gloom to vicious anger to confident calm, this was a positive prospect, but the emergence of a normal Alice, a cured? Alice was not to be. Throughout the summer and into the autumn, she seemed to facilitate balance macaulay between fantasy and reality. By October, my own health failing, I recognized I had done everything I was capable of doing for her, and after a decade of treatment, Having addressed her physical condition with the full array of our age's therapists, she had emerged from her catatonia, but we don't know why. I once thought the drug regimen had been effective. 
Now I vigorously doubt it. Reunification with her childhood toy? Turns out that the rabbit was a stand-in for the original, which disappeared years ago. Something I said? She did nothing at my command. Instruction, entreaty, or request. To the extent she was cured, she, I believe, cured herself. As she appeared more and less stable, though plagued by hallucinations that frustrated more than frightened her, I succumbed to the superintendent's entreaties. As further cure seemed doubtful, further confinement was deemed a waste of everyone's time. Lacking family and friends, but possessed a small inheritance, she left Root Lynch in November, depressed. But committed to the struggle for her sanity, Nurse Whitless found her a situation with Dr. Bumby, and Alice was released to his care at the Houndsditch Home and Refuge for Wayward Youth in the East End. I wish them both well. Now... <sighs> It's saying that she got better. She pretty much cured herself through all those years. In a way. In no, a way. Of uh, yeah. See, I'm pretty sure that what it was is that um, it was psychological damage. Um, it's kind of like... Caused by the fire. Yes. And the losing of her family. Uh, so, technically, all of this stuff that they did to try to cure her... Uh, did not help. No, it probably and that it would have her. actually done the most yeah. of it, the opposite effect. And she... Um, anyway, so this was just us explaining um, there is a previous game and we will be playing it when we find it. Yeah, first we gotta find it. Yeah, first we have to find it. But we will be playing this game now. This, like I said... It's rated uh, for 17 and up, so if you're on 17 and up, you should be what? I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, as long as it's okay with your your guidelines or your family's yeah. guidelines of what it is, you can watch this. But as I said, this game is very serious. It looks and sounds. Uh, there's gotta be it some sort of killing. Yeah, spots. it must get creepy. Oh, so, of course killing. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, so yeah. Uh, that's it for this video. In the next video, I'm gonna be starting the game. Um, uh, just leave a comment section if you like the idea of me playing the other Alice games. And I'll get back to you on that, and I'll see you in the next video then.